There were many changes in the 2012 guideline, but the three most important ones for practicing doctors are an expanded indication for mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists in patients with systolic heart failure and mild symptoms. The second important new development is a similar expansion of the indication for cardiac resynchronization therapy in patients with milder symptoms as well. And the third new development is an indication for a completely new type of therapy, ivabradine, in patients receiving an ACE inhibitor, a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, and a beta blocker, and who, despite getting evidence-based doses of those treatments, continues to have symptoms and a heart rate of 70 beats per minute or greater. Nowadays, more than 50% of all heart failure patients do have diastolic heart failure, and there is no proven therapy for these patients. In Aldo DHF, 422 patients with diastolic heart failure were randomized to receive either an aldosterone receptor antagonist or placebo. The first primary endpoint was E over E prime, tissue Doppler derived index of filling pressure, and there was a significant reduction in E over E prime with spironolactone versus placebo. The second co-primary endpoint was maximal exercise capacity, peak VO2 on spiral ergometry, and peak VO2 was not affected by spironolactone as compared to placebo. The latest data from cardiac resynchronization therapy trials provide a portrait of the best potential responders. I think that the best responder to resynchronization that means the patient in, in whom we are more confident to get a good response to CRT are today female with very wide QRS, more than 150 milliseconds, with presence of a left motor branch block and with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. Reducing hospitalization for heart failure is a key therapeutic goal in order to decrease heart failure-related mortality. During an ESC 2012 clinical trials update session, Jeffrey Borer presented data on the rate of hospitalization for heart failure in 6,505 heart failure patients enrolled in the SHIFT trial who were treated with ivabradine or placebo on top of optimal medical therapy. The results of the analysis showed that in terms of total heart failure hospitalizations throughout the trial, treatment with ivabradine resulted in 25% fewer heart failure hospitalizations than treatment with placebo. This was a highly statistically significant result. In addition, using the total time approach, the time to recurrence of heart failure hospitalization was significantly longer with ivabradine than with placebo. The message from the SHIFT trial is that heart rate lowering in patients with heart failure is beneficial, that if the heart rate is greater than 70 beats per minute, even though you've treated the patient with all the appropriate drugs, all the appropriate methods, you should lower the heart rate further, and that can be done with ivabradine.